let us get you in position all right i think we are set hello everybody welcome back to my youtube channel today we're going to be talking about something i have a phd in procrastination i consider myself to be a master procrastinator and until now, it didn't really affect me all that much. Whenever there were deadlines, I was able to meet those deadlines and get my work done in time. But recently, there's been a part of me that's been wanting to waste less time, procrastinate less and invest more in the process and worry less about the outcome. So I did what any procrastinator would do. I put it off for the next day. Just kidding. I went on to Google and I typed how to stop procrastinating. But nothing I came across was new. Everything I came across was about time management and wasting less time. But then I came across what Dandapani said and it blew my mind. But hold that thought, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. First, let's see what procrastination means. Procrastination is defined as a form of self-regulation failure characterized by the irrational delay of tasks despite potentially negative consequences. Procrastination isn't about wasting time or poor time management. It's a behavior and that to an irrational one. You're taking a task that you currently perceive as being unpleasant and then you push it to the last minute where it's going to stay just as unpleasant but then there's going to be the added pressure of meeting the deadline. But let's come back to what Dandapani said. He said that procrastination is a habit. Procrastination is a habit. I mean, how did we not realize that? But habits form when we repeat certain behaviors. So my next question was, is this a naturally occurring response? Is it a biological behavior? Or is it a learned behavior? Well, turns out the answer isn't that simple. Procrastination is a constant battle between our limbic system and our prefrontal cortex. Our prefrontal cortex is a more recently evolved portion of our brain that is responsible for decision making and planning. Our limbic system on the other hand is what is responsible for the fight or flight response. It is what forces you to pull away your hand from a flame or flee unpleasant situations, which in this case is the task that you're trying to avoid. It also includes the pleasure center of the brain and is responsible for reinforcing behavior. Which leads us to say that procrastination is a learnt behavior. We are what we repeatedly do. As kids, when we would run down to play instead of doing our homework or want to color in our coloring book instead of reciting the tables, we actively practiced procrastination. That's when we discovered the pleasure of procrastination, only to realize that, oh no, procrastination isn't pleasure at all. It's in fact a self-inflicted wound that gradually chips away the most valuable resource in the world, time. Every time you hear that notification bell, it's almost a Pavlovian response that you leave your work and you check your phone. And so every time you scroll through Instagram when you had a task at hand, or every time you blew off your workout because you just weren't feeling that energetic, you actively practice procrastination. And that's the thing with habits, right? The more you do it, the better you get at it. Practice makes perfect, remember? Except in this case, you probably don't want to be perfect at procrastination. I'm a recovering procrastination addict myself. And the number of times I've heard my mom say, is lucky my dimag hai, but she just doesn't put it to work, is not even close to funny. And so every time I got my results, I knew it wasn't because I was stupid or because I didn't understand. It was just that I didn't put in the effort because I didn't start earlier. And the number of times that I have thought just hours before the examination, oh, what an interesting topic. Or if only I'd started a little earlier because now I'm understanding everything is insane. All right, let's move on to the tips. But before that, there are a lot of other tips that I could have added to this, such as more time management tips, or planning your day ahead by making a list of the most important tasks to achieve that day. But that would have made this video very long. And frankly, I think they deserve videos of their own. Another thing that I came across a lot while reading up about this was rewarding yourself for the small tasks achieved. But you know how that goes. You promise yourself you're gonna use your phone just for five minutes and then bam, three hours later, you're on Kylie Jenner's Instagram page looking at the matching Prada bag she got for Stormy. And no, I'm not talking about myself. Alright, without further ado, here are four tips to understand and manage procrastination. Tip number one, just start. Your brain probably just went, damn it Ananya, that's so obvious. 
But when you do this, when you just start, there are two things that are happening. Number one, you're overcoming your fear. And number two, you're overcoming your stress of not starting. Because what does procrastination do? It protects you. It protects you from a possibly negative outcome. It protects you from responsibility. It protects you from embarrassment or rejection or failure. Let me give you an example. Say for instance, you're putting away responding to your work emails because opening them and responding to them is going to be stressful. Say you're putting away paying that bill because of the stress of parting with the money. Here's another one. I delayed starting my YouTube channel for three years. For three whole years, I was worried what my relatives would think and what my friends would think. An 18-year-old Ananya just wasn't ready to be called YouTuber in the corridors of her college. But when I did start, everyone was so supportive. So I was the only one who was standing in my way. I just couldn't get out of my head. I was worrying about the outcome without even starting the process. So if it's something that you will want to eventually do or something that you will have to get to, then just start right now. Just sit with your book for 5 minutes, read the first 2 pages, just start answering those emails for 5 minutes. It's more than likely that you will continue doing that task for more than just those 5 minutes. Tip number 2. Shut down the distractions. Now we generally consider distractions to be synonymous with wasting time. But that's not what it is. Distraction is anything that pulls you away from what you want to be doing. The opposite of distraction isn't focus, it's traction. That is, any action that pulls you towards what you want to be doing. Anything that you plan on doing with intent. So this basically means that anything you don't plan on doing with your time is basically just a distraction, even if it feels productive. If you're sitting down to work or study and then you get this sudden urge to Google something, then that may not be wasting time, but it for sure is a distraction. And contrary to popular belief, distractions aren't external to us. They're actually internal triggers. We're bored, we check our phone. We're uncertain, we check it up on Google. We're feeling alone, we open up Instagram or Facebook and chat with our friends. So distraction is basically what we do when we want to get out of this uncomfortable situation that we're going through. However, shutting down the external triggers that add to the distraction can go a long way. Keeping your phone in another room or keeping it in a drawer while you work or just leaving it face down on do not disturb or silent can help block out these distractions and help you focus on work. Let's move on to tip number two, which is break it down. Maybe you're procrastinating because the task at hand feels big and insurmountable. Crossing the gap between where you are and where you want to be might seem impossible, but if you break down the task into small chunks that you can achieve on a daily basis, then you're reducing that gap. Say you want to lose 20 kilos of your weight. You think there's a long way to go and you won't be able to achieve it. And so you procrastinate again. This is because in your head it's harder than it actually is or you simply lack interest. But breaking it down into actionable and achievable goals can help overcome the perception of it being a ginormous task. Remember, it's less about motivation and more about discipline. An easier way to do this is called the Pomodoro Technique, where you work for 25 minutes and then you take a 5 minute break. And then you work again for 25 minutes and then you again take a 5 minute break and so on. Let's now move on to the last tip. Tip number four, keeping the small promises. This is a big one. In fact, this one point is so important that it affects your perception of yourself, your self-confidence, your willpower, and so much more. But more on that on another day. Today, we're talking about procrastination, so we'll stick to that. When you make a promise and you keep that promise, there's a sense of achievement that you feel. This is the key to bringing about a change that will last. Because like I said, procrastination is a habit. So if you want to break out of this habit, you have to keep the small promises that you've made to yourself. And if you don't keep the small promises that you've made to yourself, there's no way in hell you're going to keep the big ones. So if you promised yourself that you will work out today or that you will eat less junk today or you will read that one chapter from that book today, then go do it. Alright, those were my four tips to understand and manage procrastination. I hope you found this useful. It's definitely changed my perception on the topic. And you know what to do next. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And you see the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Yeah, you hit it. You just hit it.